The next method for finding solutions to boundary value problems is called co-location. This method is not covered in the methods textbook. Where the shooting method integrates the boundary value problem numerically after reformulating it as an initial value problem, and the finite difference method assumes difference equations for each interval replacing derivatives with finite differences, the co-location method assumes some easy functional form for the solution and then fits the result to the ODE at the interior points and the boundaries. In this method, the dependent variable y of x might be assumed to be some sum over functions of x, phi i of x, where each of these functions is weighted with a coefficient a sub i. Consider this second order ODE over the domain from 0 to 1 with a known value for y at 0 equal to 0 and a known value for y at 1 equal to 1. These are Dirichlet boundary conditions and we want to solve over the domain from 0 to 1. We might choose a function that can easily satisfy these boundary conditions with more unknown coefficients than we have boundary conditions. To implement co-location, we first assume an approximating function y tilde that will approximate our solution. y tilde should have more unknown coefficients than we have boundary conditions, so we'll use a quadratic equation. A quadratic equation has three unknown coefficients and we have only two boundary conditions. In order to implement co-location, we're going to need to find both the first and second derivatives of y tilde because the second derivative appears in our defining equation. So we differentiate y tilde twice. Now we have three unknowns to solve for, a0, a1, and a2. The boundary conditions provide us with two equations and we choose a third point called the co-location point somewhere in the domain of x to find a third equation. The number of co-location points that we need is equal to the number of unknown coefficients minus the number of boundary conditions. So we should choose co-location points where x has a strong effect on our approximating function y tilde. And then at the co-location points, we impose the defining equation to obtain additional equations to solve for our unknown coefficients. In this case, we need only one co-location point because we have only one remaining unknown coefficient. At x equals 0, y at 0 is 0. That means that our approximating function should also be equal to 0. If we substitute x equals 0 into this equation, we find out that a0 must be equal to 0. Next, we do the same thing at the other boundary. We now set y tilde at 1 equal to 1 to satisfy the second boundary condition. Finally, we choose a co-location point. Here, we'll arbitrarily choose the center of the domain. At the center of the domain, then, we impose the constraint that the defining equation must be satisfied. d squared y dx squared has to equal 6x, and that should be equal to d squared y tilde dx squared, which is equal to 2a2. In this case, we can use this third equation to find the value for a2, and now that we know the value for a2 and a0, we can use our second constraining equation at the second boundary condition to find the value for a1. Solving these three equations simultaneously, our approximate solution from the co-location method is minus 0.5x plus 1.5x squared. Since this is a linear second order ODE, it has a known analytical solution that we can compare to our approximate solution shown here. In this case, of course the approximate solution matches the true solution at the boundaries, and it also matches quite well at our co-location point. This will not always be the case. When implementing the co-location method, we have not constrained the solution so that our approximate solution exactly matches the true solution at the co-location points. Rather, the approximate sh solution should match the defining equation at the co-location points. That is, at this co-location point x equals 0.5, the second derivative of y is equal to 6x. And that happens to also give us a value that's very close to the true solution for y. How could we improve the accuracy of the co-location method? One way to improve the accuracy, of course, is to add more co-location points and thereby use a higher order polynomial for y tilde. Our approximate solution y tilde doesn't have to be a polynomial. It could be a sum of sine and cosine functions. It could be an exponential, it could be a power law, it could be transcendental functions, and it 
could also be nonlinear in the unknown coefficients, although that would require using iterative methods to solve for the unknown coefficients. But when selecting a, an approximate solution function, you should choose a function that's easy to differentiate because you're going to need to find derivatives of it, substitute into the defining equation. The solution methods that we've looked at for boundary value problems include the shooting method in which we start with a known condition at one boundary and then we guess the necessary number of additional initial conditions and use an IVP solution method to predict the solution all the way across the domain. Then we check the solution at the other boundary to see if we've matched the boundary condition, which we probably have not, and so we iterate as necessary to achieve convergence at the other boundary. This works particularly well for second order linear boundary value problems in which we can usually obtain the solution with just three guesses. Nonlinear boundary value problems would require an iterative, iterative method to converge for the shooting and matching method. And higher order ODEs or systems of ODEs with more than two independent variables will also require guessing multiple initial conditions. In the finite difference methods, we select interior mesh points and then we replace the derivatives at those interior mesh points with finite difference formulas from chapter 6 in the defining equation. This results in a system of equations that can be solved at each of the interior mesh points. In the collocation method, we approximate the solution using a function that's easy to evaluate and differentiate and then we match that solution to constraints defined by the defining equation at points in the domain called the collocation points. One advantage of using the collocation method is that the solution is an analytical expression for a function relating the dependent variables to the independent variable. This function can then be evaluated at any point in the domain. Furthermore, we get to choose the functional form, so the function looks the way we want it to look. In the shooting method, we only know the values of the dependent variable at the points used in the IVP solver, and in the finite difference method, we only know the values of the dependent variable at the mesh points. Neither of those other two methods provides an analytical expression that we can evaluate at any point in the domain. BVP4C, which is the MATLAB boundary value problem solver that we introduced, uses a combination of collocation and finite difference methods with an adaptive mesh to achieve a desired accuracy. 